Hi there, and welcome back to another one of Sample Market's producer tips and tricks videos. Today we'll be checking out some approaches for producing speed garage style drums, taking a look at sample selection, programming, production, drum bus processing, and parallel compression. So let's jump in and check out the drum track we'll be putting together in this video. So I went through and put this beat together using one shots taken from the Speed Garage pack I did for the Hyper label on Sample Market. Going back a little bit, we'll have a listen to the beat, we'll have a listen to the beat in context with a bass and lead sound, and then we'll go through and check out each and every step involved in the process of putting this drum beat together. <laughs> So we'll begin with the kick sound and I can mute all of the drum bus processing here and as I was saying before I took all the one shots from the speed garage pack and the focus really was to choose samples that work together rather than choosing samples and then trying to crowbar them into the mix by doing some extreme EQ or processing. So I started with this kick drum. Um, they've got a little bit of EQ on there. So it's just a nice kick drum. It's got a bit of a 909 bottom end and a little bit of character with the top. And one of the important things with this kind of beat was to keep the, the kick drum fairly short. So it's quite a short sample. And if I was to bounce this in place and zoom it in on the length of the kick, you can see it's about a, it's about an eighth note long. So that's going to provide plenty of space for the big bass sound that we have in here. If you were using a big boomy 808 bass drum, the frequencies would just clash with your your bass sound. So I've opted for something quite short. And if you look on the sampler there, I've shortened the envelope and shortened the length of the sample as well. So there's no decay, there's no tail going right across to the next beat, to the next kick drum. And then a little bit of EQ, mainly on this top end. As I thought the top end was protruding slightly. You could, if you don't have these samples, opt for just a standard, this is a 909 kick drum, just a standard 909. And maybe process it or add some distortion, saturation, just to give it a little bit more character. Again, keeping an eye on the length of the bass drum so it doesn't interfere with your main bass sound. Okay, now moving on to the snare. Again, taken from the same pack, this snare here. Uh, I just went for something that had a bit of character and had a nice decay like shape to it, a little bit of decay or release. And playing this alongside the kick, it just seemed to wrap around the kick quite nicely and provide that energy in the upbeat. I noticed on the original sample, it had quite a bit of reverb and splash to it. So to make it sound tighter, I just took that off with the envelope. And then working through the drum beat, I thought the upbeat was lacking a little bit of energy, a little bit of snap. So I added this clap sound. Quite a fairly standard clap sound, to be honest. A little bit of basic EQ to roll off the low frequency. And if we bring it into this beat, mute it. You can hear it's just providing a bit more energy in the top end around two to 4K on the upbeats of our drum beat. So moving on to the open hat sound now. 
and really with this kind of beat you want something quite open quite housey really to drive the offbeat of the of the drums and provide that energy in the offbeat So I went for this open hat, some EQ rolling off the low end and just taming some of the tops a little bit. And something else I tend to do with open hats is on the envelope, bring the release down to zero. There isn't too much splash on this open hat anyway, but by bringing the release down to pretty much zero and then programming in your note like this, you can be sure that the hat is going to, there's not going to be any splash. It's not going to, the sound's not going to carry over onto the clap or the snare. So it's just going to make things a bit tighter. And then I wanted to add a bit more character to the open hat. And I've selected this extra sound in here, which is, It's got a little bit of width to it, a bit more high frequency. I think we're making that drum sound. I might have layered a, a shaker on top of the hat sound to get that kind of crisp, bright top end. And something else I've done with this, which on its own sounds a bit weird, but every other open hat, I've pitched it up two semitones. On its own it sounds a bit odd but when you play it alongside the main open hat it provides that variation every other offbeat which just makes things a little bit more interesting less kind of loopy, less repetitive and then I did look at this because I just wanted a little bit more energy in the in the higher frequencies. And um, a technique I employ sometimes is to add a bit of white noise on top of the open hats. And it just takes a bit of mixing to get the levels right. So I've used Serum for the white noise. Because Serum is quite nice because you have a few different options for different types of white noise that you can add in here. So I've added this white noise. The envelope is really short. I've used a high pass filter to sweep away any mids or lows. And it's just that burst of, of high frequency that in the context of the beat, it just adds that nice kind of crisp air to the top end of your drums. Um, a little bit of EQ basic stuff really and then also I've used this to add a bit of width to the drum loops because to the drum loop because everything was right down the middle I've used this sample delay in logic that you it, it does sound great because it gets stuff really wide but you have to approach it with caution because stuff will tend to phase using this you can get away with it with something like a, sh a shaker or a bit of white noise because it's all high frequency. So it will phase a little bit when I collapse the drum beat down to mono, which on its own again, doesn't sound great, but it's not something you're gonna notice in the context of the beat. You can just hear when I add the mono switch in, it collapses down to mono, but when you open it up again, you get that nice width on the drum loop. But just using that sample delay, it gets stuff really nice and wide. If you're working with a lead sound or something with a bit more mid frequency, you should probably employ something like a stereo imager, like the isotope imager or something like that, where you can control the frequencies and what is getting sent to the sides or even yeah mid side processing would work as well but just for something like a bit of white noise that little burst the top frequency this sample delay worked fine so now moving on to the closed hat and i've added in this hat sound a short envelope some eq and some reverb via an aux send and i've added the valhalla plate reverb 
because it was such a short sound just to give it a little bit more space and this is where you can start to make things sound a little bit more speed garage like with the swing because if you look at the programming of this hat sound they're all syncopated notes and what I've actually done is rather than use you could use quite an extreme swing to get that kind of garage feel like the machine 50% or the MPC 64-65% but what I've actually done is employ the triplet grid change this setting to 24 and you can see these are snapped to triplets um, which provides that real garage style speed garage style swing if I took the if I took that swing off and we quantize these to 16th notes. See, it's a completely different vibe. So, using the triplet grid, you get that really nice loose swing. So that was the closed hat. So now let's take a look at some of the percussion sounds I added in. And these are all syncopated notes, just to give the drum beat that loose, shuffly feel. Because obviously with the kick, snare and open hats, everything's either on the upbeat, downbeat or offbeat. So the, these, cl these closed hat and these percussion sounds are going to serve to give the beat some variation and that loose groove. So there was the first percussion sound. Let me mute some of these hi-hats now. And then I added in this extra percussion sound. Both of these have got the same reverb on, the, the Valhalla plate reverb. And the programming Oh, this one's been pitched down slightly. Oh no, this one. It's found the, the frequency is a bit nicer down there. And then this is either like percussion or snare sound. And it's almost like a talk and response vibe between the three sounds. And regards the individual drum sound processing and the programming, that was it. Now let's take a look at the drum bus processing. So what I did was I sent all of these sounds to a, a summing bus, to an aux bus, and started processing the drums to help them gel together, just to bring them to life a little bit. So for the drum bus processing, I started off with the glue compressor. This is great on drum buses. A really slow attack, fast release. So we're letting the transients through and by shortening the release, it's going to accentuate those transients and make the drum sound a little bit snappier. We've got about 3 dB of compression happening there with the gain, the makeup gain tweak. So we're not losing any signal. So let's mute this and you can definitely hear especially on the kick drum it's just bringing the front end of the kick drum through adding a bit more punch in the transients and then I added in the PSP micro warmer this is adding a little bit of drive, saturation, also compression by using this knee control.
then the PSP mix saturator with the tape setting, like a tape saturation plugin. It sounds great on the hi-hats. If you really push this, it really crunches up your the top end of your drum loop. And then some EQ, just to give the high frequency a little bit more air. You can hear just a little, a little bit more fizz on the hi-hats there, where you add that EQ in. And then I added the UAD Studer tape emulation, which used subtly, it just brings a really nice kind of amount of warmth to the drum loops. It's fairly subtle, but just adding it right at the end there, just things it kind of smooths everything off, gives everything a bit more of an analog feel. I did also experiment with the this RX 950, which is an emulation of uh, the sound of the, um, one of the old Akai samplers. And it does sound great on drums, or if you're making drum loops or making drum sounds, it actually sounds quite nice on individual drum sounds as well. Um, I didn't end up using this on this drum loop, but I'll give you a, a listen of what it was bringing to the sound in any case. You can push the input gain to crunch things a little bit. I just thought it was crunching things a little bit too much. But it's a great plugin if you want to get that old Akai sampler sound. But yeah, I settled on this tape machine. It sounded pretty nice. And then the final thing I did was some parallel compression. So all of the drum sounds are being sent to this summon bus. And then I've sent this, I've sent a signal to another AUX send over here and added in the UAD 1176. So anything, any kind of compressor with really fast attack and release times is great for parallel compression. And with this style of compression, we've got our, our drum loop here, we've got the sounds, the dry sounds here. And of course, we've used the glue compressor to accentuate the transients. And so with our parallel compression, what we're looking to do is to bring essentially the the lower levels up and just provide a bit more energy. So I've used a very fast attack and a sort of fast to medium release. So it's going to crush or squash those transients, but bring up the the lower level of the sound and just it's a great way of adding volume to your drum loops without actually adding any overall volume um, and just making things sound a lot bigger it's also known as new york compression so it's very extreme with the settings if we solo the parallel bus you can see the drums are being absolutely smashed we've got 10 to 20 db of compression happening here I take this off. And obviously on its own, it doesn't sound great at all. But when we bring the original drums back in, I take the limiter off here. I mute this parallel bus. See what the drums are picking at like minus 4.8 dB. And add this in. We're adding about 1 dB to the overall level, but we're also at the same time, we're adding a lot of energy. And I, I think it, especially on like high hats, open hats, it gives them a lot more energy, gives things a bit more of a vibe. So that was the drum loop basically. And now let's give it a listen with the bass sound that we have in here. So 
so that brings us to the end of this tips and tricks video i hope you've enjoyed it i hope it's provided you with some nice inspiration for producing speed garage drums and finally if you want to stay in the loop with upcoming content from sample markets on this channel make sure you hit that subscribe button below Oh, 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 oh